Hello, this is Tom Styles, and it's Tom's Radio Room Show, and it's Monday morning, and uh, let's see what Dark Theta is telling me, it's about 6.15 um, Eastern Daylight Time here in Florida, and we're going to do some reception testing of the Sea Crane Skywave Radio. Now, way I'm going to do it, and, and this is, it's kind of all empirical testing, and it's not precise at all. It's lots of variables, the weather, the time of day, uh, it's raining right now, so it's overcast. But what the heck, we're just going to do the test anyway. And what we're going to do, and this is just one method, is I've got my... Grundig 750 hooked up to my external antenna. Now, the external antenna right now may be at a disadvantage in that it's wet. And that's usually, usually doesn't like that, although it works okay, it's not the best. And what I did is I did an ATS scan. Let me turn the backlight on. And captured some stations. And I'm just going to use that for a reference. I'm not comparing the two radios plus the Skywave. I'm going to use its, in, its telescopic antenna. So I'm not comparing the two. I'm just going to use what I found on the Grundig for places to look to see if I can hear them on the Skywave. Now, the other thing I noticed is, and I knew about, but I didn't realize how bad it was, the Grundig took 4 minutes and 32 seconds to scan the international bands. Now, it does scan a few bands that the Skywave does not scan. It's outside its uh, limits on Chartwave. So, that's one thing. So, this, this will take a little longer because of that. But... The Skywave, as I've noticed before, when it does the ATS scan, it does it really fast. And I'm going to time it here for a second. So I've got to clear this. And then I'm going to turn this on. And I'm going to push and hold ATS. And it is now started, so I'll start this. It help if I pushed it a little harder. <clears throat> so I lost a few seconds there. And like I say, the um, I'm just using the internal. I keep saying internal because it's not really internal, but the telescopic antenna on the Skywave, which, like I said before, is pretty short. It's only 16 inches, so that's a disadvantage right there. But it's scanning. It's already. You probably can't see the display very well. It's already up to 7.5 megahertz. And moving right along. And I'm going to do this two ways. And we'll see what it found compared to the Grundig. It's, and it's not really a comparison because I can say this is using an external antenna and this is not. And then I'm going to go back to what the Grundig found and see if I can hear it at all on the Skywave. So we're up to a minute. Remember the other one was... The grunting was four and a half minutes. 15 megahertz. Seventeen point five. And it again, this is only the international bands. It's not the full spectrum of the shortwave band. Twenty-one megahertz. Twenty-five megahertz. 26, and it's done. One point, let me turn the volume down. One, uh, one minute and 32 seconds versus four minutes and 32 seconds. <laughs> oh, yeah, I think the seconds were about the same. Anyway, um, so it's pretty speedy. Like I can say there's advantages and disadvantages of it being fast. One thing is you get through the ATS scan much faster. The other thing is you concern yourself with, since it's not dwelling on a frequency as long, 
is it missing stuff whatever okay let's just see what it found and uh, I forgot I wasn't watching to see how many it found so we're just gonna have to go through it so we'll turn the volume back up there's the first one pretty strong in and out a little bit 4.84 megahertz go to the next one 5.025 pretty noisy but there's some there the next one 5.980 fading in and out number four loud and clear 6.030 I think that's just several hundred miles north of me 5.05 nothing there 5.810 nothing there 6.020 Nothing there. 6.030, loud and clear. 7.325, nothing. And 7.340, nothing. Now some of these may be from a previous scan. There's no way of telling because it doesn't erase everything it erases as it's saving or writes over what it had before I'm going to do this again so that I can watch I'm not going to time it this time so I can watch and see how many channels it, how many memory locations it uses so here we go we're going to do it again there she goes yeah I didn't I didn't see it end and it when it finishes it goes to the first memory location so you don't know where it ended now what the Gwendig does is it uses page zero which is a temporary set of memory locations and when it starts its ATS it zeroes it out so you know um, when you go back and start looking at what it found you know when it um, when you're stepping through the memory locations it will not show you the zeroed locations because it's like I say when it starts it zeroes everything out so you quickly know if you got 13 hits it will only let you go through the first 13 memory locations in page zero makes it a little more convenient where here if you got 13 hits <clears throat> from 14 up it's still going to have old data and you won't know if it's old or new a little confusion factor there for an old fart like me okay it's up to 16 megahertz 17 megahertz moving right along and it's um, it's only up to channel 4 so it didn't find much and that's what I was suspecting I was suspecting since I found when I was going through it there were so many stations that there was nothing there I suspected that it hadn't used those memory locations. Yeah, you only got four. 4.84, 5.025, 4. That's all I found. And 5 was something left over from a previous scan. Yeah, so it didn't do very good, but again, I'm using its telescopic antenna. Condition, weather conditions, not that good this morning. Um, we can just look, we go backwards here. The Now this is the Grundig with an external antenna. It only found 11 things, be they noise or stations. So let's go back. The first one it found is 3185. I don't know offhand if that is... I th yeah, I think it's in the range. Yeah, I think it starts at like 2.3 something. So let's just tune that frequency. So we'll push frequency 
3185. Yeah? Okay, there's something there. Matter of fact, that's Tennessee. But it, um, when I was, so when it was scanning, you know, and that, it sounds like that's kind of coming and going because the S meter is up and down and up and down. It could have been down, the signal could have been down when it was scanning through there. So it missed it. So that's okay. But it is picking it up. So as far as reception, it's picking it up. Now, another thing I think will, uh, that will affect the ATS function is what filter you have turned on. And I don't know if it defaults to uh, 3 kilohertz, which is its default from the factory, or it uses whatever you've set it to. So let's just, for the... For the heck of it, look. let's look at the bandwidth right now. And it's 3. So that means that it was scanning um, with the filter set at 3 kilohertz versus the maximum, which is 6, and a minimum, which is 1. And you don't want that filter to be too wide. Otherwise, you pick up and detect a lot of noise. So we'll move on. We're going to leave it three. That's the kind of the factory setting. We'll leave it there. Wow. That is real. Now, what the, the um, Grundig only has two filters, a narrow one and a wide one. And I usually leave it on the narrow. So yeah, I did the scan with the filter on the narrow, and I don't remember what the bandwidth is, how many kilohertz wide it is. I just don't remember. Sorry. It's an exercise for the student to look that up. Okay. So that's that's coming in loud and clear. It's from Tennessee. I would expect it to come in loud and clear. Again, I'm using the external antenna on the Grundig. And it's coming in pretty good, but not very clear. So, like I say, I'm not trying to compare these two radios because this is a, this is a $200, $250 radio compared to a $100 radio. I'm using its little short telescopic antenna compared to, um, I think it's 200 foot dipole antenna that I have outside. So, kind of apples and or oranges. But I'm just using this as a reference. So, we'll go on. So let's go, what's the next location? 3.890. 3 and right now that's dead. So there's nothing there. Uh, Do we pass through an hour? We, we pass through a half hour. And some stations, they, they only broadcast during certain times of the day. So that station now could be off the air. Because we have passed just went past the half hour. So we'll skip that one and go to the next one. Really? Going into a break, your calls are welcome. It's free for all for right A. We'll talk about almost anything you want to talk about right here on CSC Talk Radio. 877-895-5410. And I will be right back. Wow. That's, kind of, that's like next door. That's at 4.84. So we'll put that in. Four eight four zero, and we'll turn the volume up. Yeah, that must be close by. I'll have to look that up. Now here we can adjust the filters and see the effect. I don't know. I don't know how. Well, I do know how how well my camera picks up audio, my webcam, not very good. So you have to keep that in mind. So we're going to change the filter. There's two and one. Back to six. There's six.
I guess it would help if I stopped talking long enough. There's four. And back to three. So there's th that's coming in really good. Now, it's, like I say, I could be very close. Okay, we'll go to the next one. It's 5.00. That's WWV. Yeah. Wow. That's booming in this morning. Let's see if this guy gets it. Now, he didn't detect it, but that I don't remember if 5.00 is in an international broadcast band. It must be because that's what this thing, the Grundig is tuning, international broadcast bands also. So let's go there. Um, frequency, five, one, two, three zeros. There we go. Let's we'll turn the volume up. Very weak. Very weak. It's there, but it's very weak compared to. At the door, 11 hours, 32 minutes, coordinated universal time. Okay. Also, that shows you the effects of having a good or better outside antenna than using these small telescopic antennas. So let's go to the next one. We have a couple more. Five is 5.085. Yeah, that's out of Tennessee, I believe. Let's try it over here. 5.085. Pretty good. Yeah. Now you will notice that that there's that was music, and as I said before in the introduction to the review of this radio, is this little speaker here doesn't do a very good job on voice, except for AM and FM. Uh, doesn't do very good on. Uh, excuse me, music on shortwave, but the earbuds, and I haven't tried them because I want to keep them sealed in the package, probably will do a much, much better job than this little tiny speaker. I mean, it is tiny. So we got that station. Let's go to the next one. I think we only have a couple more left. God. I was holding a oh, yeah. There's Tennessee again. 5.89. Frequency five eight nine zero. Pretty weak. Barely hear it. There, but barely can hear it. And going back to this, it's perfect. Okay, let's see if there's any more left. Seven is five point nine seven zero. Frequency five nine seven zero. Turn the volume up. Nothing. Now yeah, maybe gone. Let's try it here. Uh, sounds like it's the fre the station is a little off frequency there. So. That doesn't surprise me that I can't get it on this one. Okay, let's, I think that's the last one, maybe? Nope. 5.98. And I'll just tune that. There we go. Ooh, that's full scale. Yeah. That's, that's loud and clear and clear as a bell. Probably very close to me. Let's go and see if we have anything else. Nine, we got another one. 6.030. Yeah. Loud and clear. Again, probably pretty close. Full scale on the sky wave. So 11. I can't trick you. Come and freeze it. Freeze it to almost absolute zero. 
9.58 frequency 9580 pretty good a little in and out Now let's uh, again try. Let's try the filters and see if we can improve that signal. Yeah, I helped a little bit. I cut the bandwidth down to two kilohertz. Got rid of some of that side noise. Now one kilohertz, it's really muddy, muffled. So that's too far. Let's go back up. Six, you get a lot of static. Four, a lot of static. Three, which is the default. And then two. It's struggling now. So let's go back to the default. There we go. Turn it down. See what else we got on here. We're up to 12. Okay, that's it. So it found 11 stations um, that we could try. And uh, the real strong ones, I mean really strong ones, came through on this radio loud and clear. This, the fairly strong ones, again using the external antenna on the Grundig, uh, just barely I could hear on this radio. So... Like I said, this is kind of a test of one. It's very empirical. The Normally, on the Grundig with my external antenna, I can usually get, oh, uh, 50 plus stations when I do an ATS. But conditions are just not good this morning with the rain and everything. Um, so it's not surprising that I didn't pick up much on the Grundig and therefore it's not surprising that the sky crane is struggling to receive this morning so keep that in mind um, as far as the reception testing of this radio I'll have to do some more reception testing at different times of the day try to find a time when band conditions are good um, you just kinda have to be patient and wait you know that's one thing about shortwave uh, you can listen for days and days and days and get nothing you think oh this short wave is nothing to it or my radio is no good and then all of a sudden the band conditions open up and the things you got stations booming in all over so keep that in mind so anyway if you enjoyed the show please give me a thumbs up i appreciate that if you would please use the share button and share my videos on say facebook or uh, Google Plus or whatever. There's, there's a whole bunch of places when you push on that share button that you can share my video. It gets it out to the other people that don't know about my station and therefore we can uh, expand the station or my channel and things will get better. I think that's how it works. Anyway, thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Now I have to go clear across the room to my laptop.